Hi guys, today we are going to discuss about simple goiter. Simple goiter is term used for thyroid enlargement, not belonging to inflammatory group, thyrotoxic group or neoplastic group. Talking about etiology, it can be due to iodine deficiency or enzymatic deficiency or due to goitrogens. Normal daily iodine requirement is 100 to 125 microgram. Simple goiter is endemic in regions with low iodine content in food and water is in mountainous regions and lowland areas is oasis it can be absolute and relative relatives during periods of stress is when there is increase in iodine demand when there is menarche, when there is pregnancy, and when there is lactation. Enzymatic deficiency is responsible for sporadic form of goiter, and it is associated with positive family history. Deficiency of peroxidase enzyme the peroxide enzyme converts inorganic iodide to organic iodide. Deficiency of peroxidase enzyme will cause Penders syndrome, which is a triad of deafness, goiter, and mutism. There is deficiency of dehydrogenase enzyme too. which is responsible for sporadic form of goit. Talking about goitrogens, intake of goitrogens will result into goiter formation. Thiocyanate that is present in cabbage, drugs as para amino salicylic acid, antithyroid drugs are some of the examples. The normal thyroid will turn into physiological goiter when there is stress leading to hyperplasia and hyperplasploid. When there is decrease of iodine and in, will result into increase in TSH. With increase in iodine, it will go into normal involution. If the iodine excess, it will cause hyperinvolution and the colloid goiter will form. If there is a recurrence of stress and repeated stress, it will result into formation of simple nodular goiter. Okay, let's let's revise the same thing in detail. It was too quick over there. This is a normal thyroid follicle. When there is deficiency in iron, there is deficient thyroid hormone production. So there is increase in thyroid stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland. So the there is enlargement of thyroid gland, there is hyperplasia of the follicles resulting into diffuse hyperplastic goiter which is also known as physiologic goiter. It uh, occurs when there is increased demand in iodine. So when you give the patient iodine, there will be increase in TSH. There will be decrease in TSH. Thus, it, it, it will undergo involution. When there is excess iodine, it will go hyper involution and there is formation of colloid goiter which is non-functioning SNI with flattened epithelium distended with colloid and the repetition of this process will result into heterogeneity the repetition of all this process from diffuse hyperplastic goiter to colloid goiter will cause simple nodular goiter. We have here the diagrammatic representation of simple nodular goiter 
with small and big nodules. There will be hemorrhage in the follicles, which will cause central necrosis. And these central necrosis will collage together, will join together to form a nodule, which is non-functioning. So we have nodular tissue and internodular tissue. Nodular tissue is inactive and internodular tissue is active. So we have all this process. So talking about the types of simple goiter, it is more simple goiter is more common in females and is more liable to repeated stresses, menstrual cycles, pregnancy, and lactation. The types are number one diffuse hyperplastic goiter, colloid goiter, and simple nodular goiter. This is let's talk about simple physiologic goiter. It is also known as diffuse hyperplastic goiter. There is diffuse hyperplasia of follicles. In endemic regions, the children are affected, and the sporad in sporadic regions, the infection is due to increased metabolic demand due to puberty or pregnancy. There is diffuse, soft, homogeneous enlargement of the gland. Simple colloid goiter. The clinical picture there is enlarged gland with smooth surface and soft consistency. It is not a clinical diagnosis, it is a pathological diagnosis. You, you can see here distended follicle with colloid and flattened epithelium. In the microscopic picture now in the cord section you can see here the glistening surface due to follicles full of colloid simple colloid goiter is an irreversible pathology it cannot be reversed by the use of iodine or so over now let's move on to simple nodular goiter there we have a lot of nodules multiple nodules are present and there is always a dominant nodule which is clinically felt or palpable and rest nodules are not palpable so it will present as a solitary nodule most of the time here you can see the multiple nodules and the dominant nodule which is usually felt clinically and other nodules no thank you for watching this video